because you guys really 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 liked the previous V deck profile where I did my Draconic Waterfall and seeing that September's strategy presentation never actually cancelled V. I, I, I don't know, everyone was telling me, oh V's gonna die, V's gonna die, and then they just never did, so I don't know what's the deal with that. But okay, since I have a bit of spare time before the end of the year gets really messy with all the D developments that are coming up, today I've decided to go back and pay my respects. Thank you. Thank you for the last 12 years. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Mr. Four here. Today, I am back to cover Eradicators in V2024. Yeah, I never thought I'd be doing this, but we're doing it because we actually got a new Eradicator in V back in 2023. And that is, of course, Ambush Storm, Ambush Dust Eradicator Lin Chu. Yes, Lin Chu is finally here, which completes the entire cycle. That means every one of our original Eradicator cast, as well as our modern crew members that joined us in 2020 for Divine Lightning Radiance, VBT-12 is fully completed. We have the whole gang back together. It kind of feels like when I die, when I go to heaven, I want to see all of them standing there in the light. That'll be nice. But today, we are doing this because this is potentially my last V deck profile. We don't know what they will do to V in December. We don't know if they're going to cancel the format, give it a new booster, anything, maybe put it back in try format. N no idea. Very frankly, no idea. Uh, but I think the only thing that everyone kind of knows is that there is a blank slot in... There, there is a blank slot in January for us to actually do a set, right? So we pretty much do have a space to do a V set in January. But whether they actually end up doing it or not, or if we scrap this format, frankly, no one, no one knows. So today, I'm going to talk about my Eradicators. This is a deck that means a lot to me because I've played this competitively for the last, I don't know, five years, six years. I, I mean, Narukami V has been the pillar of my personal competitive life for, I, I don't know how long I've played this. And more locals that I can count, which is insane. I, I've, I've played this at national level. I've played this everywhere I go. I've played this overseas. Yeah, this is definitely a, a deck that means a lot to me. So, first and foremost, before I get started, I just want to just say very quickly, this is for V Eradicators for Dragonic Descendant, who is my longtime best friend, and Gauntlet Buster Dragon, who is the star of today's show, as you can see on the map. If you are looking for alternate v die profiles for Eradicators, i.e. Vowing Saber, or if you're looking for Sweep Command, check the links in the description, please. I have linked both of them, separate videos, in the description. So that will cover virtually all points of v Narukami's Eradicator lineup. So I don't think I'm actually missing anyone from here on out. So with that out of the way, that will cover it. I I'm not going to reply to any comments that ask, what about Vowing Saber? It, it's in the description, okay? I don't want to keep repeating myself, so that's all I will end it with. What is the point of this deck profile? The point of this deck profile is for me, obviously, to do a personal send-off for one of my favorite decks because this is one of my favorite decks of all time. Even if this format ends, even if I'm forced to play premium, which I wouldn't, not with this, yeah, I still wanted to give this the proper time of day. And because you guys actually wanted to see more V, I was like, okay, I'll do it. You know, what? why not? Whether I'll do more V for the rest of the year really depends on what Bushy Road says and what my own personal calendar says. I've been really far behind my own work and my health, to be honest. But so far, we're just going to try and see. So yeah, that's the reason why today I'm doing this video. So for our great trees, I'll just segue into it right away. Uh... Our great trees, we obviously play four copies of Dragonic Descendant and four copies of Gauntlet Buster Dragon. Those of you who know me personally know that I spent my entire career at Axis Vanguard just talking about this guy to death. So I'm I pretty much said everything I need to say. Dragonic Descendant, he's got three very simple but effective skills. It's a nice little traffic light, red, blue, and green. Yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. So the red skill is a con skill that says when this unit will be placed, he gains all of the abilities of the Eradicator Vanguard you were currently on as it is placed. That means if you ride it on top of another Eradicator, right, he just copies the entire skill text up. He just gains all the effects for free. This is the kind of design I miss from V. I know they don't do this often, but I kind of wish they did this indeed. <laughs> because this this is this is unique, this is cool, and I don't think I've ever had a deck like this, right? So 
what this means is that, for example, Spark Race is on play skill. When you write the sentence, you actually copy and you can get that on place as if it was Spark Race being placed again. Pretty insane, pretty cool, and it applies to all eradicators in this deck for Descendant. Uh, yeah, and this whole deck is eradicators, as you can pretty much tell. So any card that Descendant writes on top of, he's going to copy that skill. Second, third skill, very simple. <coughs> His X skill is on Vanguard Rega Circle, just so blast one. Bind one of your opponents from your rear guard circles, move one of their back row units to the front. And then his third skill is his limit break skill, which is that once per turn, at the end of battle, that its attack fails. Come last one, discard one, stand it, drive minus one. Again, very simple, very plain boss. Nothing flashy here, to be honest. Not, nothing out of the blue. But it is just so cool. Like, come on, man. I, I love this so much. I cannot tell you how many times I've Play this guy over and over, it's just freaking amazing. The art still stands up today, five, four to five years later. In fact, one of the reasons why I'm even doing this video is that this is the fourth anniversary, I think, of Divine Lightning Radiance. I'm pretty sure it's in October. I could be getting my dates wrong, I need to check. Let me know in the comment section below for those who remember, because I'm a bit old on that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, a lot of the eradicators you're going to see have all been reprinted in V calls, in History Call. It's really cheap and really accessible, so I don't think building this is a problem if you wanted to build this. But this deck is mostly higher rarity in the fact that I've chosen to buy most of this deck in triple rare. I own a second version of this deck in base rarity, that was the original print, but this is my high rare version, kind of. I can't really call it high rare. I still keep the VR Gauntlet Buster. I paid like 3,000 yen for each copy. <laughs> Man. Old, old times. But this guy has been reprinted as a common, if I'm not wrong, so you, you, you shouldn't struggle. Gauntlet Buster is the main grade 3, right? You go into first, you go into Gauntlet Buster first, and you go into Descendant. But, you know, that that's the game plan. That's what we're looking for. And this deck has a lot of searches, so you just try and compress your deck to make that happen as much as possible. Gauntlet Buster Dragon, uh, for every open front rear circle of your opponent, he gains 5,000 power plus 1 critical. <coughs> this is a passive during your turn. Realistically, if Golden Buster attacks, you know, it's... If you manage to play the opponent's front row, he'll gain 10,000 power plus 2 critical, which is an easy 22k 3 crit vanguard, which is insane. But I will get to the weaknesses later. Uh, Color Blast 1 for his X skill, discard 1, bind off your opponent's front row rearguard circles, and move any back rows from the rearguard to the front if you want. Uh, this skill bypasses resist, because it just binds all, so that's the good part. <coughs> but... The Carlos one discard one's very heavy. So normally you only use that skill if there's actually two rear guards. Don't use it if there's only one, because that's just really bad cost management. Uh Gold and Buster used to be really threatening back in 2019, and one of the reasons why Excel Hell was such a bad format to play. But to be honest, I love this guy now. I've grown to really appreciate him, especially from 2020 onwards. I, I think it's really nice. I feel like all the problems that Gold and Buster caused in the format has been checked because of heal guardians, perfect guards, the 2024 V promos for those of you who are in the know, all your 2024 V promos are all defensive promos from the hand. All of them shut Gauntlet Buster Dragon down. Completely. So realistically, the Gauntlet Buster is a knowledge check. You know, a lot of people that play V competitively in English and for one to two people in Japan, they play it as a format to just say, guys, I don't want to study the new stuff. I'm just going to use the same stuff and play for five years. Surely no one will catch me off guard. This guy will. This guy sure as hell will. So, <coughs> that's one of the main reasons why I still think Call of Buster is pretty fun today. He is an aged boss. He isn't that strong as he was four years ago, five years ago, for sure. But compared to Dragonic Waterfall, Dragon Waterfall, he, he could make his own deck into a relatively playable tier 2.5. This is definitely a tier 2 deck. This is definitely better than Waterfall because the crit pressure and the power, the spot removal is unparalleled. I know Gurgit is still the best deck in the format. This is one of the few decks that stands a chance for Gurgit because Gurgit is excel. And the natural predator of all XL is Narukami. So, realistically speaking, this is not the Gurgit killer. It's definitely not, I can tell you from personal experience. But I have beaten Gurgit before. It's not impossible. But, you know, at least this deck has the capacity to even dream of doing so. And that's really thanks to Gauntlet Buster. Descendant, sorry, but you're not actually as good as I hype you up to be. But Gauntlet Buster, 
He's the main punch of this deck, literally. Moving on to our great twos, our great twos, we have more spicy fellas to come. So let me take them out for you to see. For our great twos, our great twos, we have four copies of Eradicator Spark Rage Dragon. We have four copies of Supreme Army Eradicator Zuitan. And then we have three copies of uh, Lightning Whip Eradicator Suhail. King Suhail. So Zuitan, I'll cover Zuitan first. Zuitan is in Zuitan is a retrain of the original Zuitan. <coughs> Strangely, this guy has never been reprinted. No idea why. He's not been reprinted, but uh, push it, Come on. Uh, his first skill is that when your opponent's regard is bound by your card effects, this unit and all copies of Eradicator, Gauntlet, Buster, Dragon gain 5,000 power during your turn for each. So if you have a Zuitan on the same time that Gauntlet Buster is around, you can basically pass the 5k, 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 5k. Gauntlet Buster will exceed 22,000 power. He's going to go up to at least 32,000 or higher. That's pretty little. And yeah, that, that, that's pretty much pretty good. But... Downside is that Descendant does not share the Gauntlet Buster name. He can copy the effects of Gauntlet Buster, he cannot carry the name. So realistically, only Zuitan will be gaining the power. That's why I'm okay to play 4 copies of Gauntlet Buster, because realistically speaking, even as a rear guard, Gauntlet Buster can be threatening with Zuitan. And Zuitan has the skill that at the end of the battle using an attack, if your opponent has no front of rear guards, move this to the soul and draw a card. Very simple, it's just uh, you know one of your cycle cards to draw. I believe for the kids nowadays, you call this Inlet Pulse? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, we, we were doing that five years ago, okay? You're not special. Now to cover all the new people from Divine Lightning Radiance. I can't really call them new though, because they've been around for four years in this format. Spark Race. Spark Race is your premier grade 2 right for every Radicator's deck. As long as you play Radicators, this is your grade 2 right, no matter the cost. Spark Rage Dragon, when placed on the Vanguard Circle, he gains 5,000 power. Then look at the top 5 cards in your deck, add an Eradicator from one name to your hand. Discard a card, shuffle the deck. Very simple, very easy. 3 plus 5, free search, really good. Of course, with Descendant, you can use the effect twice, which ensures your deck becomes very consistent. But if not, you can just use the first skill and it's really nice. I miss the times, man. I miss the times where you could print a card like this and it looks that good as just a ride out card. And you know what? Spark Race isn't all that bad. He still has a rearguard skill, which is when this unit attack hits, Soul Blast 1, draw a card. And that's on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. So even though he's clearly meant to be a right target, he's still not useless on a Rearguard Circle. Not like freaking Rotavisor, where your entire right line is only good in the right deck, and then the rearguard skill is just complete shit. I, I don't know, man. But you know what? This is pretty nice. I, I'll say plays at 4, because this is your main right target. So yeah. But realistically, if you're the kind of guy who doesn't really like early gaming, you can just throw this out. It has reprinted as a rare. It was a rare. It's reprinted as a triple rare for those who are wondering. Last but not least, we have Suhail. Suhail, I'm playing my original print because I like the original fighting better. Uh, Suhail, as long as he's on an additional regular circle, he gains 5,000 power. That basically means on XL, he's a 14k body. So if you play XL1, he's 24k. If he's XL2, he's 19k. Realistically speaking, because Eradicators do not have a good hand size, I mean, I literally just showed it to you, uh, we tend to play XL2, but if you want to greet out against some new V player who doesn't know what he's doing, you can do XL1 and try and crush it, but you could, you could, okay? Uh, <coughs> the second skill is when placed on a Vega Vega circle, if you eradicate a Vega, it's got a card from your hand, choose one opponent's Vega circles, bind it, draw one. Front row Vega, yeah. So, Suheil is basically a free cycle through your deck as well. You just drop one, draw one, bind one. Very simple as well for double rare. In fact, I kind of... I'm surprised because we used to have a great two Eradicator triple rare on Eradicators. In fact, we had two. Neither of them see play in modern day because they're just too expensive. This guy though is really sleek. Very effective and he's even good as a rare circle. So, you can just call him to an XL circle and he already threatens for decent enough numbers. Uh, but other than that though, that's really about it. You can play Suheil as your right target because he, he can use the skill on VOR, but I tend not to. I'm playing him at a 3-off personally because I think that's just enough. But if you want to play for Suheil, I think that's absolutely fine. Suheil is one of those cards that even though he's never really been part of the Eradicator crew, in terms of the original crew, I still love his ass the most. Come on, this, this guy is... 
He's done it so much work and he fits the aesthetic so well. It really feels like he was one of them in 2013. Moving on to our great ones, our great ones, we play four copies of Rising Phoenix because the bird, 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 the bird is the word. Uh, we play four copies of Demolition Dragon, the eradicator version because Demolition Dragon is a card. It, it, it is a card, okay? There, there is a card in Narukami called Demolition Dragon for V-Series. This is Eradicator Demolition Dragon, just so you know. And then this is Nozuku. Uh, yeah. So, let's get right into it. So, for <coughs> Rising Phoenix, as long as you've watched any of my past V Narukami work from the last 5-6 years, first of all, thank you. Secondly, yeah, it's just Rising Phoenix. You just call it back to Regard Circle from the drop zone when the unit is bound, and it gains 3k. Yeah, it's just that good. Honestly, I'm gonna be real honest here. This card is way better than its D series counterpart, Rising Phoenix. This guy is really ass. He does nothing. He costs a soul minus one over costed. This guy is so good. I miss this man. Putting the two of them together, it's clear who I miss right now. But you know what? Narukami is Narukami, no matter the time, no matter the format, and I'm gonna still play Narukami until I physically cannot play this game anymore. And then, of course, the rest of our great ones, we have Nozuku. Nozuku is just a top 5 searcher for Eradicators. Nothing special there, just on place on VOR, top 5, and then Eradicate your hand, discard 1, shuffle the deck. Very simple, very easy. Demolition Dragon, Demolition Dragon, you know, he's a... He's a... When his unit attack, or booster attack, he hits a Vanguard, or just hits anything, you can draw a card, and then, if you want, you can move this card to the soul, choose one of your opponent's cards from the drop zone, and bind it. Very nice, as for those of you who know, Eradicators don't really have plus pressure. This is kind of it. This, this is the only plus pressure you are realistically going to get. So it, it is nice, to be honest. <coughs> but all Demolition Dragon does is threaten on hits. He doesn't help for the proactive game. He only makes it very lethal when you go you know, early and aggressively. But other than that, he does not do very much. That being said though, his... He coming back as an Eradicator, I am very happy. Because when they did him in the original version of Demolition Dragon, man, no, nobody liked that. I liked that, I, I played it, but it was not a good card. This though, this is way better. So, Demolition Dragon, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I'm very happy to have you here. And I just want to just trash it out real quick. I do actually have two blank slots in this deck. Uh... I know, I know, deck profile, guy's lazy because he doesn't want to cover the whole deck. Oh, boohoo. But I can explain, besides me flexing my Vanguard Zero Sleeves, I can explain. This deck, like I said, is a deck I've played for many years and I usually keep these two slots open depending on what the meta is. I know what you're thinking. Ames, the meta hasn't changed in three years for V-Series. Why should I listen to you? In this slot, I've played many things before. I've played extra... V grade trees, I've played grade ones, I've played extra suhails, I've even played uh <coughs> Cho O before, for those of you who know what Cho O is. So this slot is very, very flexible. That's why I'm not gonna commit to an answer on camera. I think realistically, if you do wanna try this deck, it is fun to take a look and see if you what you wanna put in your last two offs. I, I'm okay with anything, very honestly. I've been testing a few options. I have a few options I have a preference for, but I was just thinking for this video, rather than impose that onto you, I would say, you know, give it a shot and try it. it because I've noticed for myself, I've always had these two exact slots open all the time. So yeah, I just thought it was pretty funny if I did this. And for great zeros, our great zeros are very obviously going to be a crit. Okay, actually, it's not obvious, but the idea is that you want to kill your opponent as fast as possible, so... That's why I'm playing great 8 crits. I know some people in Eradicators, they like to play extra draws, but I'm not really a fan of that. To me, that's kind of delaying the point of Narukami. For draw PGs, we still need pieces, and Gulp is Gulp, so I will take it. I'm not going to play 12 crit because that's just overkill. And then for heals, we are playing Seobo as the heal because Seobo is an Eradicator heal, which means you can actually search her out. Really fun fact, a lot of people don't know that, but you can actually search out, which is why I'm playing it. And last but not least, we have Linchu. Linchu, welcome back, my friend. Really nice to have you. I know we have an Eradicator starter, V is the little guy from the 8 yoke. He's alright, but nothing beats family. 
And that will wrap up my deck profile for my Eradicator's Dragonic Descendant as well as Eradicator Gauntlet Buster Dragon. Very honestly though, I, I'm really happy that I got to cover this deck, you know, because this is a deck that I've actually never covered before on this channel, very surprisingly. I did cover my Dragonic Descendant deck profile, but that was with the Great Tree in its main set. I never actually covered it with Gauntlet Buster be because I just thought, you know, why, just, why not just show the budget version? But this time, I can go full out and just tell you everything there is about this deck. It's not a difficult deck, it's not a meta deck, it's not a good deck, it's not Gurgit's Killer, but you know what? It's my deck and I really want to talk about it. I've won tournaments, I've lost tournaments with it, but I've still had fun with it all the same. If you are a fan of Narukami and V, if you are specifically a fan of the Eradicators of the anime Link Joker, this is definitely a deck you need to complete in your lifetime because it is insanely consistent, easy to play as long as you learn your mulligan and very fun. <coughs> this is the kind of deck I talk about when I say V-Series still has its fun. This is the kind of deck that I reference, I think of, and I smile to myself when people say, why, why do you still play this shit format? This format hasn't changed, why do you still play it? It's because of decks like this. And I know there are people out there, like yourselves, who also play V-Series because of these underdog style decks. Decks that have not only a personal connection to you, but decks that are fun to play, effective at what they do, and it's a lot like Vanguard. I hate to say this, but as much as I love Divines, as much as I love Standard, you know, realistically speaking, we've never had to play around stuff like a Riot deck, and I've never had to worry about, you know, a G-Zone in competitive Vanguard again. Like, I've never had that. If I want to play G-Zone, I will play Premium, but I don't want to play Premium because, you know, the format sucks. But beyond that, though, like, if you don't want either one of the extremes, if you still want to play a format without an over-trigger, I would say V is still a very good option. And it's, it doesn't have to be dead in your area. As long as you find people willing to play with you, I'm pretty sure you could still have a nice game or two realistically once or twice a month unless you're you know, a bunch of school kids then you guys can just play every day. What, what do I know? But honestly though, that is really going to be it. V-Series, you guys have had a lot of ups, especially in 2021 post the D-Series Leonard shit. You've had a lot of downs, you know, you had 2019's XL Hell, you had 2020's, you know, really terrible year of power creep with COVID, and just a lot of stuff wrong in V. You had Steam Maidens, you know, you had Angle Blader, you had Gavriel, you had... What the hell is the other guy called again? The, 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 the really irritating guy from... Ah, yeah, that's right. You had Tavas, you had Luat, you know, the PBD Luat, that one year of a tier... That one month of a tier zero meta in October 2020. Yeah, I hate it, but... The, those times are over, you know, if you're still hating a format because of what it did, then no one should play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because Yu-Gi-Oh! has some completely disgusting formats, you know, and you guys still play it, right? So, why can't it apply to V? Why do we have to keep pissing on old formats and not say, hey, V now is actually not bad, you should change your mindset. No, no one's willing to do that. I don't know why. But, you know what, for those of you who are willing to keep playing V-Series, Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for staying with me till the end, in quotations. Yeah, I really do hope that is a V-series product, January. I think we all deserve it at this point, but Kidani may have other plans, and I have to respect that because, you know, it's, it's his company. It's his business model, you know. If he thinks printing another six copies of, I don't know, Gibrasaurus is going to be the answer for Vanguard, sure, I, I, I don't care. But, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Of course, to my Narukami, thank you all so much. Thank you all. It's been an absolute blast to have you guys around. And even if this format ends, I'm still going to keep this deck next to my bedside. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Take care.